Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are on the road here at Google Cloud Next at New York in New York City at the brand new Pier 57 building. It's exceptional and awesome, and I might even want to come work here, but not this year. Uh, I am also here with my co-host Daniel Newman of Future Research. Daniel, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Just got back from the keynote and super excited. It is really nice here, Pat. I, it is. I, I mean, it's like uh, we were talking about it, like, is this a country club or a place to come work? I think that's kind of the idea, right? It's I, a little it bit of both. As we came out of the keynote, there was sushi, there was salmon. Um, the <laughs> meals looked delicious. I stopped and got a, a latte. Um, I guess, though, we always talk about culture. You and I do a lot of research. We yeah. find in our research that companies that want to drive innovation tend to have great cultures. And I got to say, I don't know if you ever get hangry, but I know that when I'm satiated, yeah. I tend to do my best work. Daniel, we got to get focused here. <laughs> right, let's introduce uh, our guests here, June and Sudhir from Google Cloud, representing data and AI. Rather than me go in and pretend I know exactly what you do, uh, maybe Sudhir will start, start with you on what do you do for Google Cloud? Uh, so I'm Sudhir Hasbe. I run product management for all of our data analytics services. So everything from how do we get data into data cloud, how do you process it uh, with Spark as well as different engines, how do you analyze it with products like BigQuery, how do you govern it with like, like you know, governance and management, business intelligence, so anything, how do you visualize it, how do you get value out of it, that's the whole portfolio that I, that I manage. Yeah, I saw some big announcements today, that's great. How about you, June? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jun Yang. Uh, I run our Google Cloud AI and Industry Solutions portfolio. Uh, it's a very expansive portfolio. We have products that's geared towards the data scientists and machine learning engineers. We have products that's really geared towards developers. We also have products that's really towards the business users. And so really trying to use AI and make AI more accessible to all of our customers, big or small. You look awful familiar to somebody I saw on stage about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Yes, okay. I was part of Thomas's keynote. Now, uh, congratulations on your announcements uh, as well. Yeah, we're and very she, excited about that. She did a great job. I was actually in her breakout before, and I came up and I saw her here, and I'm like, I've seen you twice already today, and now we <laughs> have the, the honor and the I chance. I sat next to her at dinner last night. We are... And she had to tell me that she was on our show. In the presence of celebrities. <laughs> I know. Um, but in serious, you had some really great announcements. Uh, some stuff that was very excited. You'll see some of my initial analysis have, has already gone out into my Twitter stream. That's modern, if anything, right? We can't even wait to write a report. We just start start tweeting it right away. We'll, we'll write the boring um, PDFs. But I we'll, love we'll some of the there. stuff with Looker. Very exciting. I, I just can instantly start to see everything moving from citizen developer all the way through very complex data science. But it's really all about making the world better, making companies more efficient, uh, driving operations, experiences. So just, I guess, give us that high level. Why Google's data cloud? I think there are, uh, there are three key things that uh, we focus on. So every organization is going through digital transformation. And as they're going through that, they need a lot of different capabilities. So we have focused on three key areas to differentiate. First is comprehensive, but uh, unified. So you need a lot of capabilities, but how do you bring them together into a unified platform so our customers don't have to stitch these things together? Second is openness. Openness across not just open formats, open APIs, but also open to being in an environment where you have a lot of different parties, like multi-cloud. Like we believe data is going to be in multiple clouds for people. How do we enable those use cases or hybrid use cases? So, so being open to that and also being open to partnering with in some cases, our competitors as well as our partner ecosystem, so our customers get the end-to-end -end value. And third, of course, intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, so continue on the open theme a little bit, right? Open is something that's important to all of Google Cloud, and certainly within the, the data and AI portfolio as well. Um, you know, there is just a lot of uh, innovations out there, and we want to make sure we give the flexibility to the customers. So in Google AI, for example, we support all the open framework frameworks, the TensorFlow, PyTorch, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we also are big contributors to many of the open source projects there as well. And uh, coming to the intelligent pillar, intelligent to us, it really means like how do we get more intelligence out of the data you have, right? Whether you're applying analytics, whether you're applying AI to these, uh, to, to be able to process these data. 
and then Google has done really the last 20 years of research and really solving a lot of those hard problems. Sundar mentioned some of those earlier, right? Computer vision, uh, natural language processing, conversation, and so right. forth. And we have benefited a great deal from you know, these technologies. So now we want to bring a lot of these technology and make that available to enterprises as well so they can start enjoying the benefits and really kind of make AI and harness the power of AI work for them. Yeah, the openness is super important long term. I mean, you know, we have five generations here in, in IT. Even people who, you know, remember getting kind of locked into a certain vendor uh, over time. And um, on AI, it seems like everybody knows how to make it complex, but the hard part is, is how to make it it's simple. It's kind of like the three bears, right? Which is, you know, not too difficult, not too easy, where it doesn't necessarily add value. It's kind of like right in the, in the middle of that. And I do think, and I'm so glad to hear Google finally talking about leverage from the other part of the company, there have been years where I was like, no, we're not going to talk about that. But, um, uh, you know, since T, uh, TK came in and kind of put, uh, I think, you know, no, I don't think anybody asks you about ads or anything like that. You can finally talk about your leverage strategy because it makes sense. I mean, you're investing hundreds of millions, if not billions in R&D that why not scale? And sure, application of AI and analytics is going to be different, whether it's consumer or business, but the raw technology is the same. And the security, it needs to be the same um, as it does um, cross companies. So uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's something that's really important to us. I mean, this is an area we work very closely with Google Research, work with Google DeepMind, and really yeah. figure out how do we take the best of uh, you know, what Google has done and what makes sense for us to commercialize and make this available to the rest of the organization. Yeah. So uh, I heard you talk about being the most uh, complete uh, data platform out there. And listen, you know, you're running the businesses out there. This isn't just some holistic, uh, you know, big marketing claim. Can you talk about the proof behind it? I think the, so if you think about complete and unified is the key thing for us, right? It's yeah. of course like how do you do end-to-end -end use cases for, for uh, organizations. If you think about today's challenge for organizations is you have all these different systems that they need to go ahead and get data in, process it, analyze it, business intelligence and AI. The whole ecosystem becomes pretty complex in organizations. Yeah. And they need to then start stitching it together and the amount of effort they put in that is significant. So for us actually, as June was saying, we leverage some of the core foundational technology that was built in Google to scale to all these billion user applications that we have built over time. And that allows us to build differentiated product wherein we can build out of the box integrations on things. Like we use the same substrate from a storage perspective for our operational databases, analytical systems, and AI platform. So all the data gets shared across all of that for a customer. And so we are able to build these tight integrations between operational and analytical systems, real-time synchronization that you have. We just launched uh, our CDC service, which is data stream, where we can start synchronizing more seamlessly and all. So that's one aspect of it. Like, how do we le leverage this? And so you heard about our announcement on Big Lake. So what is Big Lake? Big Lake is fundamentally break the silos between warehouses, which is, let's say, BigQuery, lakes that may be on object stores like GCS, and you have a single uh, now API framework or storage engine that breaks all these silos. And then expanding it into S3 in Azure, uh, uh, AWS as well as in Azure, so you have a single substrate for all of that. So I think Dare, so that, dare I call it a data fabric? Uh, you could. <laughs> no. I think I think there have been I different terms. I called this like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so di different terms for it, but the whole idea is unification across all your data, so you can have a single environment for it. The other thing is, it's not just one type of data, structured, semi-structured, unstructured. We have ha we are the leaders in unstructured data processing with AI ML, but with now enabling BigQuery to do unstructured data. Now you can use simplification, SQL-based processing on top of unstructured data. So that whole thing around like, how do you get customers to use any data that they have in the environment? The second is, how do you use any kind of workloads on it? 
which is whether you're running Spark or whether you're running uh, TensorFlow, whether you're running SQL, we want you to be able to leverage a unified platform for any workload, but on the same data. So governance and management is centralized. You don't have to take copies and copies of data. In most other platforms, you take data from here, make a copy, then you do something, make another copy. What's the big problem? How many versions of customer do you have now? Right. You, well, there's cost to that. move that data as well. Yeah. Cost to store the data as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the third is reach. Like this is where you saw the Looker announcements and how we are bringing Data Studio as Looker Studio and unifying it to reach every user in a governed and measured manner where required and self-service where required. So that's the like you know three angles to it. But we also believe from an unification and openness our ecosystem. So we basically started our data alliance with key players in the industry to define common governance, common interoperability, as well as skills gap management. Uh, we have 800 plus ISVs building on top of data cloud so they can share information with different uh, companies within the environment. Uh, and we have like 100 plus technology partners who are also part of the ecosystem. So it's not just differentiated platform, products we are building, but the ecosystem that goes around it. So, so I, I got to ask, a little bit uh, off the script, but you talk about the open ecosystem, right? And we've seen this tried before, and it's kind of blown up a little bit. What makes you think it's going to work? Is it the, the number of partners that have committed? Is it the type of partners? Is it the ecosystem? Why this time is open going to get the, the buy-in when it hasn't in the past? I think the, the goals have to be aligned. It's not like how many partners are in the ecosystem. It's about, are you focused on the same problem set? And if you agree on the problems. And so when we uh, defined the alliance, our first goal was, what are we trying to solve for? So one was, hey, governance is a problem for everybody. Yeah. And the more products you have, whether you use, we have a close partnership with Elastic, and we have close partnership with uh, Databricks and, and various other folks. So the question is, how do you have common governance across all of these platforms? Is, is one problem to be solved. How do you interoperate more seamlessly between these? Like uh, one of the announcements we made with Elastic was, how do you do searches on top of data without making copies and moving data? Right. So understanding those common thing, and third one that we identified was skills gap. Like it's, there is a challenge, like people don't know what reference architecture should look like. How do you simplify it? So it, when you have common goals, I think it's easier to go ahead and make changes versus like too many partners trying to do too many things, it doesn't work. So that's why I'm confident that with Alliance, actually we will be able yeah. to go ahead and make good progress on these areas. Uh, a little clarity on the all. So it's all types of data anywhere for any application. Did I, did I hit the three? Yeah, so it's all types of data across any workloads that you're running okay. to reach every user that you want to have. Thank you. Now, does that include data that's on-prem uh, on a data center? Yes, it does, in, uh, and we are doing various things on data integration side, how do we bring it. There will be different technologies that will work in cloud versus on-prem. Yeah. Uh, like for BigQuery, we are going to run it in all different clouds. Moving BigQuery on-prem, I think it's a massive thing. Uh, we may not do that, but our open source technologies like Dataproc and all, of course we are looking at how they run on-prem and stuff like that. Okay, final speed round for both of you. Um, I know you love all your children the same, but uh, June for UAI and Sudhir on, on the data side, uh, most exciting announcement, you only get one. <laughs> uh, now of you're the really, event. You're, you're really putting it on the spot for I, me. I have to do this. Okay, um, so I think for me, I would talk about Translation Hub, uh, because that's something that is really AI for everyday people. Right. Translation Hub allows everyday people to be able to upload a document and we can translate to 135 languages and all done this in a matter of seconds, right? And so you don't have to be a data scientist. You don't even have to be a developer. You need to know how to click a few buttons. Now you can really think about you know, this whole open and connected world. Whether you're translating things for your internal employee base to kind of feel, making them feel more com connected, yeah. or to kind of try to reach your customers through your marketing brochures and whatnot. I, I just four think it's such a powerful one. during the keynote, <laughs> and that was one of them. I, I was like, good, good. And I was like, now that's something I haven't seen before. I may have done a little selling for you too. I actually, oh, okay. you know, we as analysts in research firms write a lot of papers and right. I've got some clients that translate these into dozens. Yeah. And it's always like, very it's always very difficult to get the translation, especially because of local language of issues. Course. And I sent it to a client, I'm like, you've done like 300 of these in the last year. I'm like, 
you need this. And I literally yeah. got a response and she's like, I do. And so. Um, <laughs> you did yesterday, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll, we'll get it. We might have a real world opportunity. Okay, okay. Sudhir, awesome. we get one answer. One, that's it. No, it. no connecting two together either. No, I will not do that. So I was thinking whether it's unstructured data support in BigQuery, Big Lake, but I will pick a completely different one. Okay. It's the top of mind for every customer is governance and management. And I think that the most important announcement from us was around data quality and lineage. If you don't know what's your quality of your data, if you don't understand where it's coming from, everything on uh, AI analytics becomes not that valuable. So I would pick that one as the top announcement. I'm glad you picked that, because quite frankly, that's where point solutions fall, fall over, right? I mean, a regulator comes in, it's like, what's protected, what's secure, where's your data? And it's like, uh, I don't know, let me check about 50 different places for these point products. But you want to take us out, Daniel, here? This has been a great conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I just want to, I do want to put one last caveat, because you know, I-, I Always got to get the last well, word. Well, you know, I sat in I your session, though, and I had two of your panelists at my table. Okay. And one of them was the Walmart uh, exec, and he, he definitely told some great stories from the stage. But all I would say is that, he asked us, your Googler at the table asked us the question basically about, you know, A, are we seeing transformation? And it was really interesting to listen to someone like him who has Prem and multiple clouds. He talked yeah. about having two. Basically say, we talk all about this. He said, but when you actually get under the, it is a cluster. <laughs> and so this challenge is, but what he did say, this openness that you guys are talking about is the opportunity to solve so many data challenges. So June, Sudhir, thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks for uh, coming on to the show and letting us be here at this cool, uh, you know, new Pier 57 here in New York City. So for everyone out there, thank you all so much for tuning in with us. We're here at Google Cloud Next. This is the 6.5 on the road for Patrick, for myself. We'll see you all really soon. <laughs>